Hello, it's Dale here. Just following on from last week, because so many people asked me this. I know I've perhaps talked about it before. That was the little one that I made last week, which is the back page of my little book that I'm making. But a lot of people ask about the texture. So I am starting on the front page and I wove again. You can see the different things that I've woven. And then I went to my embellishing machine and I used some scraps of cotton scrim that I had. It's hand dyed. You can see the different colours. I haven't worked right into it thoroughly. But it's just lovely how you get the little flexi bits coming up and down. Now I want to make a small piece that's a little bit like this one that I've uh, made before this big piece which people always seem to enjoy and but at the bottom so at the top I'm going to uh, that's the top I'm going to stitch with this thread that I bought a few years ago people also ask me what that is so you get the little flex so it looks like snowflakes or things coming through so I shall be stitching with that and you get that's just one of the things that you might have in your box some sort of an interesting thread and first of all I stitched rows just to keep it all together with it's actually uh pearl 12 in uh cleave that's worth it but it's just a fine thread that i wanted and it doesn't matter it's going to sink in a bit when it had the um scrim on the backing and then to do this i've done it before with bigger pieces put in my fibers here's some here's my fibers that that's in stonehaven colors and i trap them between two layers of water soluble um, that's Romeo. Now my Romeo has been sitting around for a long time so it gets all stuck and goes hard. It doesn't seem to matter in the long run. And for this one I made a, a very tiny, so that's putting the fibres between two and lots of circle stitching. Now this little one today is only going to be tiny because it's going to fit uh, across the bottom here so it's probably already too big. So I've just done a little bit of stitching and then I've started cutting out some shapes as you can see. Um, and this is what happens when you cut the shapes out. You put another piece of soluble on the bottom and stitch around in the circles to get this type of effect. So I'll just very quickly, that's where I've cut a shape out and uh, a little piece here. Just keep all these little tiny little pieces um, and I'll just do one just to show you. So you pop it down on here, feed dogs down, free stitching and make sure you want the other piece because Sometimes people don't like stitching just in mid-air, which doesn't normally worry me. But um, And you just go round and around that little circle. And that's all I will do, just to show you that when you wash it out, you're then left with a little circle that I can start stitching up some rocks and things into my shape with different threads. So that'll end up going over the top of here when it's all finished, um, long like that, piece of fibre, and then I'll be able to stitch little things into it just to make it look like my pebbles and stones. And then it will become uh, part of a page. It's going to be on the front page, I think, but I'm not quite sure. So that's how I do it. It's very, very easy. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't really, can you see how it's all loose and there's the um, fibres, the silk fibres underneath. They just give that nice little bit of texture and uh, you use it how you like and I've stitched it down here across the top there with machine and so on so it becomes just whatever you fancy doing and then I put some more little stitches to get it to come back up so that's where I'm at um, and uh, I'll sh as well as tidying my studio and working through things I'm just pottering along with this so yep see you again another time bye